Hello everybody and welcome. It has been a while. Today I'm going to replace NVMe drive in my rogue ally and do a repasting. All we need is a USB C dock, thermal paste, screwdriver and a keyboard. Opening this device is easy and all you need to do is unscrew 6 screws and pry out the back cover. I would advise using prying tool like one I have here and just work your way around. After that back cover will be easy to remove. Here we can see on both air intake sides that we have dust filters, which is awesome. Unfortunately, my device did not come with rubber pads for battery on both sides, as I saw for many other devices online. Here's the R2 Hall effect trigger. Here on the bottom, we can see 40 watt hour battery with a large cut in the middle for battery PCB. We have left and right fans. In the middle is APU just under the black heat shield. On the left side, as well on the right, we have joystick PCBs connected with a ribbon cable. You will need to remove heat shield slowly so that you don't tear it apart and to avoid paint removal from heat pipe. Here you can see how much space there is just above NVMe drive to the fan. This is also giving me some ideas for the future, so stay tuned for that. Again, in the middle we have RAM just under the APU and as you can see ASUS could have made this battery a little bit bigger. To remove NVMe, just remove the screw and lift it up gently and pull it away. Here we have standard Gen 4 Micron 500GB NVMe drive, which was not that bad at all. Also ASUS is still doing this nonsense with warranty stickers. What the hell ASUS? To remove the battery, I will need to remove 4 screws. Then just disconnect room and cable from both sides, since it is easier and you don't risk tearing it apart. After that you can gently lift the battery and that's it. Here you can better see what I meant with ASUS could have used a bigger battery. There is enough space and PCB could have been arranged elsewhere, or at least Asus could have given us space for a standard size NVMe drive maybe, if not battery. Under the battery we have speakers on both sides, Wi-Fi antennas are located in the middle. To take off the cooling block we will need to remove 6 screws, 2 on the fan sides and 4 on the APU. After that you can use your fingernail and slowly pull in the middle and then you can take it out. As you can see Asus have used decently thick copper plate for APU cover, which is nice. Here we have phase changing thermal paste. Well done ASUS for being up to date. Also we can see that they either use extra copper layer or it was left when milling for better die pressure. Again well done ASUS and here we can see that the contact was perfect. Now I'm going to clean both APU and cooling block with alcohol and apply my favorite thermal paste, Apex from AlphaCool. It is something between PTM and standard paste. It is thick enough but not too thick and thermal conductivity is great. I always cover my whole die and leave a bit in the middle to push out all trapped air when reassembling. Also not to forget, Asus used bottom of the fan as a heatsink for VRM, which is smart. Putting everything back can be tricky since both fans are relatively loose. My advice is to align them before and then hold it in the middle and use one of the screws to secure it in place. After that you can screw other three screws in X pattern and you're good to go. I got my Soul Corsair MP600 mini drive since that was the only reasonable option that I could find. Replacement is simple, just put it back in place and secure it with screw. Additionally, I have placed three small copper heatsinks on top of the APU block and one onto the chip of NVMe drive. Putting back the battery is pretty easy, just align it and it will sit in place. Put all the screws back and connect the ribbon cable on both sides. Also, don't forget to connect the battery tool. Back cover is even easier to put back, just align it properly and click it in place on the edges. After that, secure it with screw. My advice is to start with bottom middle one and then do the rest. And now everything should be back in its place. Now we need to access BIOS. Hold down volume plus and power button together and after the device is on, keep holding only volume plus button. In BIOS you can navigate with controller or with touch input, which is awesome. We're going to use built-in cloud recovery. Just navigate to advanced menu and choose cloud recovery. Then choose your Wi-Fi network and type your password. As you can see, it did not work for me, for some reason. I then tried again and I got same issue. I even tried with China-based servers and it did not work too. Instead, it just rebooted itself into the BIOS again. I have tried at least five times since I did not want to bother with driver installation manually and armory crate SC and other ASUS stuff. I was pissed off 
and I was forced to use vanilla Windows installation and do it all the way. Also, my advice is to have all your Ally drivers on USB stick since SD card reader is missing drivers and you will not be able to use it. So we are going to use Shift F10 combination to call CMD and from there start Explorer. Also, I just realized that we don't need external keyboard anymore since software one is already available directly in Windows and even in BIOS when needed. Now, as I said, card reader is not working, so I use my SD card with external USB-C hub to install all the drivers one by one. After that is done, you can finish it with installing Armory Create SC and do one more restart. And that's it. Besides Cloud Recovery, everything went as planned and device is up and running. There is more to come regarding Rogue Ally since I want to make it my main device. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Cheers.